and Aya, and I saw Amer, um, and if anyone else turned it on, but I didn't notice because um, my internet's going like terribly. So, China, what you need to remember, or perhaps learn because you didn't pay attention enough last year. <laughs> so, first thing, we need to make sure we remember the mandate of heaven. Hopefully, this is ringing a bell to you all because this is a muy importante concept for when we study China. And this idea was that there was an agreement. Or if you want to be super fancy, you say there was a pact. Yes. Oh, man, doesn't that sound much more awesome? Between the ruler, so the king, the emperor, and heaven, a.k.a. the gods. All right? So there is an agreement between the two parties, the ruling party and the godly party. And the idea is that the gods say, you know what? Guess what, Sahil? You should be the ruler. That's right. You should be the the, the big kahuna, the head honcho, the grand poobah. And only Sahil and his descendants can be the head honcho, the big kahuna, the grand poobah. So there's only one ruler. But Sahil only has the right to rule if he is being virtuous. So the reason why Sahil was chosen by the gods to be the sole ruler was because he's such a darn good guy. Very virtuous. And here's the thing. If Sahil and his family line are not virtuous, if they start turning evil, if the power corrupts them, the right to rule is not limited to his family. The gods have every right to kick him out of power and say, Sarah, you and your line are the next grand poobah head honcho big kahunas of China. So... There's a lot of implications to the mandate of heaven, which are important to realize. Is first off, if you are the king, you are the emperor or empress, you are first off a religious ruler because you are interfacing with the gods to keep the gods happy. We've kind of seen a lot of that when we studied the Americas thus far and other civilizations like Egypt last year. Also, think about it this way. If you are selected by the gods, that means you have supreme power. You are acting on behalf of, of the creators, of the people who make the wind and the rain and the water flow and the fire. I mean, all those things. So, yeah, you rule with supreme power now, Sarah. You really, truly are the big kahuna. But just like how Sahil was overthrown. He lost the mandate. If you are not virtuous, the gods are going to make it known. They're going to send earthquakes, floods, famines. They're going to have bad luck, comets in the sky, all those kind of things. And you will be overthrown by the people. It is their duty to kick you out of power. So lots of power, but lots of responsibility. And I just you know, us being at Frederick Classical Charter School, I super duper love that virtue is what they are going for with their rulers. So that means the ruler, they got to be virtuous. So they need to be honest. They need to be loyal, courageous, and they need to treat their people well. Like I said, if they are not doing these things, nature rejects them. The gods say, you're out of here. And they'll have floods, natural disasters, telling the people to kick out the ruler, to get rid of unvirtuous people. Does this make sense thus far? And hopefully ring a bell from last year? Isha shakes her head yes, hopefully that she's like, yes, I remember this because I watched all of your videos and was a good student. Um, but I totally know, based on the YouTube view numbers, that the vast majority of you, actually, depending on the day, roughly 50% to 75% of you did not even watch the video. You just like tried to like guess the questions and it made me sad. <laughs> oh, good. Aya says yes. Celine says yeah. I'm not sure what bell... Hopefully the notification bell, <laughs> which now you don't really want to because there's a lot of garbage on the channel. 
So here's just kind of the cycle of it right here. This image is pretty good. So, you know, it starts here. A powerful new dynasty receives the mandate of heaven. So the new agreement saying the gods say you will be the ruler and you will be virtuous. And then typically what would happen is the new emperor is going to do some good things and have China be peaceful, have harmony, fix the government, fix the problems. And therefore, life usually gets good for the people in there because they're, the government's providing prosperity, the government's providing protection. But then what happens over time, the leaders start forgetting about how the last people lost the mandate corruption starts going in you know people born into it they're used to getting the silver spoon getting everything they want they become selfish they become evil so therefore then often the government and this is kind of crazy this happens time and time again in china it really is cyclical um taxes get raised they start saying all right we need bigger armies i need bigger palaces and then therefore that dynasty loses the mandate of heaven then we see natural disasters, famines, we see invasions, things getting bad for the people of China, and then therefore the people are going to rebel against that dynasty, and we get the cycle again. So that is the cycle for our Chinese dynasties, and it really does hold true for the most part. It's pretty wild. So mandate of heaven, have to, have to, have to remember it. All right. And now let's just review a little bit from our last dynasty. I mean, we could go back, talk about Emperor Qin Shi Huangdi. Oh man, you never got to watch the first Emperor video where he descends into madness and demands an immortality potion, which of course then has mercury, which winds up poisoning him. But before it winds up killing him, makes him go to absolutely crazy, which makes him become an even worse ruler. Oh man, it is wild. It is wild. I'm sorry you guys missed it. You should check it out. China, uh, Emperor Qin Shi Huangdi, first emperor of China. Anyways. The Han Dynasty, we're going to see kind of following that cycle. They're going to start off after overthrowing Emperor Qin. Uh, well, he dies and then they overthrow his son, I should say. I apologize. Um, and we see the Han Dynasty. We have great trade. We're going to see the Silk Road become muy importante, which apparently Miss Anzic gave you props for remembering anything about the Silk Road, which is impressive because, you know, we didn't have class in school. Wow, that's a kitty cat tail in your face. <laughs> And uh, we're going to see the Silk Road going and wind up being amazing, going all this trade across the West, camel caravans crossing the Gobi Desert. And, you know, I'm never going to be like, tell me everything that was on the Silk Road, because that's ridiculous. But you do need to know that silk was the main product, because China was the only place in the world who knew how to make silk at this time. And everybody wanted it because it was so comfy, um, so nice. But along the way, they'd pick up cotton from India because India was the only place making cotton, perfume, spices, horses. Oh, man. All good stuff. And because we have this trade route called the Silk Road, we're going to wind up having things like Buddhism go from India to China and at one point become the primary religion of China. And we're going to see how it's then going to spread to Japan and to Korea later on in this unit. Another big thing we need to remember about the Han is they created a large government. And that's the term we use for that is called a bureaucracy. When you have a lot of people working for your government and of course, following the cycle after all of this time, eventually that bureaucracy becomes corrupt. Dishonest workers start ruling. You know, Simon's job is to go protect, um, you know, the Great Wall, make sure to stop you know, northern nomads from attacking. But instead, Simon goes to his office. He brings his Nintendo Switch. He puts his feet up on the desk. He's playing games. And like, while right outside, like nomads are breaking away at the Great Wall. You know, Amer is in charge of trade. And, you know, he winds up going and stealing a lot of the profits. You know, Isha is supposed to wind up going and being um like a head diplomat but instead of going on her trips and making peace with people she instead goes eats all the food is rude at the you know at the dinner and then starts wars with the people just kidding so those are the things we need to remember from china from last year hopefully this was review for some of you this is your first time having mr kenny and you didn't you probably didn't get these things when you were in fifth grade but this should give us a good foundation so that we can do our um, China section of our Asia unit uh, with fidelity and with strength. So that is our notes from the day. Do we have any questions?
questions about what we've discussed here? My mouse is like not working. It's 